Welcome to Tech Gurukul. In previous lecture, we had started a new chapter, Digital Logic Families. In that lecture, we had learned about the classification of different logic families. In this presentation, we will learn about the different characteristics of digital ICs. IC is the abbreviated form of integrated circuits. We know that the ICs which we are using in digital circuits are known as digital ICs. In this chapter, we will learn about different logic families, RTL, DTL, TTL, CMOS ICs. So it is necessary to be familiar with the behavior of these ICs, the characteristic of these ICs. The characteristics of a IC logic families are compared usually by analyzing the circuit of the basic gate in each logic family. The most important parameters that are used to evaluate and compare these logic families are propagation delay, power dissipation, figure of merit, fan out, noise immunity, operating temperature, current and voltage parameters. So these are the different parameters by which we will compare the different logic families. So in this presentation, we will learn about these all characteristics, these all parameters. So let us take the first parameter propagation delay. Now, what is the propagation delay? The propagation delay of a gate is the average transition time that a signal takes to propagate from input to the output. Means, well, this is a gate, when we apply a signal at its input, it will take certain time to propagate to the output. So this particular interval of time that say signal takes to propagate from input to the output is called propagation delay. Propagation delay is generally measured between 50% of the transition of the input and output. So this is the input signal applied to a gate. This is the output of a inverter gate or NOT gate you can say this is the NOT gate. So when we apply we won't get instantly the output but it takes certain time when the output goes from high position to the low. So this particular delay time is represented by TPHL. TPHL means time period when output goes from high to low. And this is the another delay time when our output signal goes from low to high state that is represented by TPLH. So the average propagation delay will be the average of these two delay times. The propagation delay is always measured in nanoseconds. Nanosecond is the 10 raised to the power minus 9 of a second. This is measured in nanoseconds. For example, if we take a standard TTL IC and it has TPHL is equal to 7 nanosecond and TPLH is equal to 11 nanosecond. Then if you want to average propagation delay, that will be equal to 11 plus 7 divided by 2 means 18 by 2 is equal to 9 nanosecond. So the average propagation delay will be the average of these two delays. If you want to calculate the propagation delay of digital system, then it will be the sum of the propagation delay of the individual gates and the speed of operation of a IC is always specified in terms of the propagation delay. If there is a less propagation delay, speed of operation will be more. So it is always advantageous to be smaller propagation delay. So the gates which we are using in a digital system should have smaller propagation delays and we should have used less number of gate so the total propagation delay of the digital system is smaller. So it is always advantageous to be a smaller propagation delay so that the speed of operation or speed of an IC is much more. The second parameter, the second characteristic is power dissipation. We know that every electronic circuit requires a certain amount of power to operate. This power is, this is expressed in milliwatts. Basically, this is the amount of power dissipated in an IC in the form of heat. So the excessive heat could damage the IC. So the power dissipation always should be 
less. This power dissipation is determined by the current ICC which is drawn from the power supply VCC. So we can write PD is equal to power dissipation is equal to VCC multiplied by ICC. The average value of this ICC will be equal to ICCH plus ICCL divided by 2. This ICCH is the current drawn from the power supply when output voltage is at high level and this ICCL is the amount of power drawn from the power supply when output voltage is at low level. So this is the average ICC which we can calculate and which is used to calculate the average power dissipation that will be equal to VCC multiplied by ICC average. Usually there is one terminal for power supply in each IC which is represented by VCC when TTL IC is there and it is represented by VDD when there is a CMOS IC. So for example if there is a standard TTL NAND gate IC It is VCC is equal to plus 5 volt and the value of this ICCH is equal to 1 milliampere and the value of this ICCL is equal to 3 milliampere. Then we can calculate the power dissipation. First we will calculate the ICC average. ICC average will be 1 plus 3 divided by 2. So it is 4 by 2. 2 milliampere. So we can calculate the power dissipation is equal to 5 multiplied by 2 milliampere. So it will be 10 milliwatts. So it is always advantageous that power dissipation should be less. Now we will see the next parameter. The next characteristics of the digital IC is the figure of merit. The figure of merit is always defined as the product of speed and power. The speed of a digital IC is expressed in the form of propagation delay. So the figure of merit will be equal to propagation delay and power. This propagation delay, this is measured in nanoseconds and this power is measured in milliwatts. Nanoseconds means it is 10 to the power minus seconds and this milliwatt is 10 is to the power minus 3 watts so it will be 10 is to the power minus 12 joules or you can say it is measured in pico joules so the figure of merit is expressed in pico joules it is always desirable that figure of merit should be as low as possible we know that it is always desirable that the speed of the digital circuit is high means this propagation delay should be less and this power dissipation should be also less. So there is always a compromise between this propagation delay and the power because the figure of merit is constant. So if you want to increase the speed of the digital circuit then the power dissipation is increased. And if you want to lower down the power dissipation then the speed of operation will be less because it is measured in the form of propagation delay. You can take the example of mobile phones. The mobile phone which we are using these days is Android phones. They are having so many applications. When we run so many applications on an Android phone, the power dissipation is more. So the battery of the mobile phone is consumed very fast. So it is the reason when we want this propagation delay low or you can say speed of operation is more, the power dissipation will be increased. So there is always a compromise between speed and power of a digital circuit. So these are the characteristics which were studied in this part. The rest of the characteristics we will do in the next part of the characteristics. That's all for this presentation. If you have any doubt, any queries, write in the comment box. Thank you.